Hi, I'm Bruce Finzant with Trick Tools. I want to talk to you a little bit today about the Bailey RDB250 tubing bender. Uh, this machine is a very familiar machine to us, very popular. Um, it's actually the style of machine that we started our company with uh, back in 1995. Uh, we started with the mission of helping racing companies uh, be more productive and more efficient. A lot of companies had simple manual benders or hydraulic benders and uh, needed to step up their production. And uh, this type of programmable machine was one that really helped people get their production going better and uh, be able to build more cars quicker uh, with the same number of employees. So it's been something we've had a lot of experience with. Now this Bailey machine hasn't been around quite that long, but it's been a really good machine. It's made in the US, has a two and a half inch uh, OD tube capacity or two inch schedule 40. It's actually a planetary gear drive, all electric machine. So there's no hydraulic cylinders, no resetting, no pinning, any of that kind of um, hassle. It's programmable. You can put basically all of your bending data in this uh, control panel here. You can store up to 170 different part numbers with up to 10 bends per part. So it's really nice to be able to, you know, Get your, get your parts all labeled with part numbers and just store them all in the, in the little touch screen panel here. Um, what we're showing it with today, we're gonna talk a little bit about this indexing table, which is a great option if you're needing to bend long, long parts with multiple bends. So it's a way to help um, make things more repeatable and eliminate some of the uh, measuring and marking, you know, everybody's got the tape measure and the Sharpie marker in their pocket and marking all their tubes. Well, with this style machine, uh, sometimes customers need to adapt a little bit and they can bend up maybe 25 or 50 of each part. So they get everything set up one time and then they can just knock out a bunch of parts and stockpile a bunch of, uh, a bunch of parts and pieces like that. So it can make your operation a lot more efficient. So, um, just going to go over some of the features of this machine that we're going to go up and talk about the setup of the positioning table and we'll show you how that all works with uh, with the indexing table um, to, to bend a multiple bend part. So you can see here if you look on the on the machine it's got a really nice uh, drop on tooling design. Uh, the counter bend die that that swings out of the way allows you to just if you're just making a small part you can just drop your tube right in there. Uh, there are two bolts holding this die set on, but they are there just to kind of help secure it. The, the die just slides right off. So it's really quick and easy to uh, be able to change to a different size of tooling. Um, you've got an indicator here that shows you your clamping pressure. So you can repeat this clamping pressure. That's very important on these machines that you get this position the same every time. That's going to have an effect on your overall bend uh, degree of bend and spring back. And then in the control panel, you can see that we have, uh, we have program mode or manual mode. So if you're just wanting to make a simple bend and match it to a template or uh, you know another part, you can actually put it in manual mode and just easily um, and quickly make a bend and stop it at any point. But if you're ready to start bending up multiple parts, you can go into programming mode and uh, here you can see we've got some different parts stored. Um, from there you go to run and there's your main bending screen. So we're not going to go into real in-depth how to program this machine in this video. Just want to kind of give you an overview of what that looks like. But it gives you your bend angle, your spring back, which is something that you figure out from trial and error and doing some measuring. Um, it allows you to put in any rotation that you might need between parts, as well as this counter die position. Uh, you can store all of that in here. So, um, yeah, very fast. You can set speeds for each different bend. So if you have a, a four bend part, you can set the bend speed quicker on the first couple bends and slow it down. If you have a lot of material swinging around, you can really slow that down so you're not you know, putting anybody in danger by a part swinging around quickly, but we'll show you the bending speeds here when we get started in just a second. Um, 
Yeah, and the positioning table, like I said, that's, uh, it's great for long parts, especially when you have multiple bends. Sometimes the, sometimes the advantage of the positioning table is to keep your bends all in a single plane, and sometimes you want to be able to rotate slightly out of plane, and it's equal advantage in both areas. Um, keeping the bend, if you have a multiple bend part and all the bends have to be in a, in a single plane, like a roll cage hoop, for instance, um, keeping the tube chucked into this um, indexing table will help you to keep that all um, in the same plane without a whole lot of re-leveling and measuring between, um, between bends. So you can see a couple of features on this positioning table. Um, number one, there's wheels on this end. So this is designed to swing, and that's important actually. We've had customers before that wanted to make this uh, fixed because if you've ever seen a mandrel tube bender, they often have a long bed similar to this and they would be in a, f a fixed bed. But it's important with this type of machine um, that the tube is actually allowed to pivot. And so this has to have wheels. It has to be allowed to swing a little bit freely. And um, if it doesn't swing like that, it can affect your bend quality. So one tip I always tell people is make sure this is rolling freely. Um, if you have a real rough concrete floor in your shop, you may need to put down a a sheet of aluminum or steel or something to allow this to pivot. Um, but that's, that is the way it's designed to be and needs to work that way. Um, on the positioning table, you also have a degree wheel here. So you can see that uh, if you want to change your tube rotation, you can crank this handle and you can actually read the scale on how many degrees of rotation you want to go. So, you know, 90 degrees is easy to track with a level, but if you need to change something 18 degrees, this is a good way to be able to track that rotation. The other feature on the indexing table is to be able to set up uh, hard stops. So when you slide your tube forward, it goes over the bump stop, slides back, and comes to a hard stop here. So that helps you to get your length between bends. You can see that there's actually a uh, uh, scale on the back here with a mark so you can read that as a reference. There's also on the die itself there is a zero mark so if you're bending without the index table you would actually make a mark and line that up with this zero mark on the die that would be where the beginning of your bend would start. If you're using the index table you don't need that beginning of bend mark you just can can use the reference mark on the indexing table. And once you make a few parts, there may need to be a little bit of adjusting, but then you can store the information from this indexing mark to uh, set up your parts for the next time if you wanna do the same thing. So just lift up the lever. It's actually uh, one of the things you wanna do with this um, is to pivot the table out of the way. That frees up the tube to slide through the die easily. So if you're going forward or backward, you lift the lever to go back to the bump stop. And then when you're ready to bend, you pivot the table back and it locks it into the clamping arm on the die set. So we try to run the table pretty much uh, perpendicular to the way that the bender is set up. So we just pivot it back to slide it, pivot it right back up there to kind of lock it in and then you're ready to bend. So if you're back against your length stop and your table is pushed up to 90 degrees to the bender, and you're ready to go ahead and make a bend here. So you pivot the counter die in, we'll tighten the clamp, and I had chose 355 as my reference for the pressure. Again, that's just a reference number. You kind of get the feel of just putting light pressure on the counter die to uh, hold that all in place. All the bending is actually happening right here in this little bronze block. So as this die rotates, the bend stays right here. And this is helping to pinch your tube and hold it from collapsing as it's being bent. So it uses a, a method called pre-ovalization. It draws the tube into this die and it's performing all that bending right here at this spot. So we'll make a bend here. We've got a foot pedal control. It's got forward and reverse. 
and the control panel here kind of helps guide you through the steps as you go. So we're ready to make our first bend. This is a three bend part that we have programmed into the PC right now. And I'll show you here just by stepping on the pedal. There we go. So now when that's done, it says right here in this yellow bar, bend done, release forward pedal, and it changes to reverse to go home. So we'll loosen up our clamping pressure. Can pivot that out of the way. And we can return to home. You can see that this die actually slows down it starts out slow and then speeds up and as it comes back, it's, it returns at full speed and then it slowly finds its home so it doesn't run past that home point. So it's, it allows you to be very accurate with your, with your bending. So now that we have the first bend completed, we can pivot this around, slide the tube into the next stop. We'll bring it back to our hard stop. We're just gonna leave it right on zero. We'll lock the tube back into the die set here. We're ready for our next bend. So you may want to use some bending lube occasionally so we can put a little bit of lube on here as it draws into the tube. Help keep the sliding part of the dies lubricated. We'll go back into our reference mark, 355, ready to do bend number two. All right, bend number two is complete. I'll reverse it back. Now we're ready to go to our next bend. So the same thing, slide it forward, back it up. One thing you, you want to make sure is that it stays on the bend stop. Sometimes if it's dragging a little bit on the die there, when you pivot it in, you want to make sure it's not pulling it forward off the stop. So one thing I always do is recommend kind of putting some pressure on here when you push it in like that. And then you can just double check to make sure you're either on your reference mark here or that, you're, that your stop is still touching. Go in here and clamp it up again. And we'll go ahead and start our last bend. So there you go, you can see we've done a three bend part. We did some initial setup to get the table set up the way we wanted it, but we didn't have to be out here leveling, marking, measuring, doing all this separately. Allows you to be able to create a whole stack of parts that are bent exactly the same in a very productive manner. So check out this uh, bender indexing table combo on our website. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call. And uh, thanks for watching.